Hi everybody, I'm Christian and welcome to our pork-like, um, our roguelike tutorial. And this is going to be one of the final episodes actually. We are almost where we started out, where I started out when I created this, um, this tutorial. Um, so today we are going to do some wrapping up. Today the one thing I want to focus on is the music, at implement all of the music. Then we're going to see how many tokens we have left. And then it's going to be up to us to kind of consider what else we can do, what, how, can, uh, how else can, we can enrich our game. I'm not going to start continue working on this game for much longer because we kind of achieved almost our goal which is to kind of create like a good um, base um, like a template like a vanilla template for us to, to to play around with and it's really just up to us now to kind of tweak this around manipulate this but again this is just something more for the seven day roguelike challenge for actual polish for actual game development for, for you know the the game mechanics and so forth and less for like the tutorial here all of the mechanics that that we want to need in a roguelike are kind of like we have the template set up for us and the rest is kind of like is where you take or take over Okay, so first um, let's deal with the music. I have something prepared here. I have to remember to, to uh, move over later on. So this is uh, music and sound effects from, uh, from my um, template, from my um, prototype. And I will just go ahead and just copy all of it over. So this is all of the stuff and I just want to paste it in in our pork-like. Um, I'm not going to go through each individual sound. Well, I will go through in, in each individual sound, but I'm not going to uh, recreate that sound in our in our game. Um, um, I will just copy everything over. Partially because a lot of the stuff that, that I'm copying over here is not actually something I created. I asked my good friend Sebastian Hassler, who is a... Um, excellent excellent musician and i work like i really like working with him he's not really like a big um, chiptune artist or anything but he's just a really good musician and he kind of like taught himself how to make uh, his beautiful music in the pico 8 i love him so much for that okay so we copied over the music now sometimes this this breaks the pico 8 file but it seems to be working here let's see if the music works it works so there is a um, if you import all the music and the, again the pico 8 file will be down in a doobly-doo so you will be able to import this music as well and you have the permission to use this music in your game if you want to but please um do like music by sebastian hassler um here's going to be his name if you if you don't know how to spell his name <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is the, he created like a really nice. We were listening to a lot of soundtracks from Zelda because I really like the dungeon music in Zelda, especially in uh, we listened to uh, Link's Awakening music, and uh, he came up with this with with this kind of thing. We had like multiple variants. We were discussing this a lot actually, like what kind of music to make because we don't want to have anything that overpowers um, the player. This is going to be uh, this is a game where you have to think a lot after all, right? <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Excellent. I love the soundtrack so much. It's very, very long, very moody. It's kind of often quite difficult to make a moody soundtrack in Pico 8 because everything is, you know, loud and 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 bright and those those bleepsy bleepsy tunes. So it's kind of really nice. I really appreciate it. every time a soundtrack manages to get like a really cool mood going. We also have here 21 is gonna be I actually wrote it down. That's gonna be the, the You Died music. <laughs> And then here we have the U1 music. Yeah, you know, kind of like a traditional, more traditional, uh, very conservative tunes. And then at the end I, I added, you know, number 63. And that's going to be just the bass from the music. Just an infinite loop. So my idea is that we're gonna play this bass at the beginning when you enter the game, and then the actual music starts when you first uh, enter the first stairs. That's kind of like the, the idea here. And there is like um, the sound effects now. Sebastian, um, we didn't do a good job of coordinating with each other. So Sebastian, um, he used a lot of sound effects, and um, I, but I kind of make sure that every sound effect that's not being used is, is going to be an empty sound effect. So we have, I think, around nine sound effects that we can still can use for various things after all the sound effects that I also added here additionally. Uh, so all of these are sound effects. Now here is, I think, where we begin, yeah? No, that's, that's, that's still music. Wait a minute, there was a one in between that was empty, right? 41, did I write it down? No, I didn't. <gasps> this is empty, cool. 41. Uh, what else? I think the oh here are still some more. Oh yeah, then then there's actually a lot more than than I thought. So it's gonna be 45, 46, 47. Okay. Good. Mm, so here are now some sound. So this is a sound effect that um, is going to be like a all initially, initially I had the sound effect for like being paralyzed for being stunned, but I think it works very well as any kind of status effect sound effect to kind of like let you know that something unexpected was happening. Um, this is a sound effect for throwing that will um, play when you throw something. This is um, a standard confirm sound effect, or is it? No, this is confirm, and this is cancel for any kind of menu interactions. This is going upstairs. I love this very much. It sounds very much like the Zelda sound effect. This is gonna be a menu uh, cursor move sound effect. And we already know about these sound effects. These are already familiar ones. Okay, so now let's start implementing all of this stuff. So first of all, when we start the game, I want to be a music uh, 63, right? And then when we go up the stairs, I want to... Um, and this is a bit of a um, problem because um, when we start the new music, the old music won't be in sync, so sometimes you will see what I mean. Um, <clears throat> Oh, actually, let's not do it here. Is it good to do it here? Um, let's do it something like this. Um, I want to cut this out and maybe do it in the gameplay function, although, ah, no, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so on the first floor, we set the steps to zero and we set the music to um, uh, zero. <laughs> And you see there's a bit of a hiccup on the, on the beat and you there you could sync them up but it would require some like you would have like a timer that runs and you have to count how long this music is and then only start the new, new music when the timer reaches a certain value you can pull this off but it's really not convenient and that's something that i would really love if uh, pico 8 had some more tools of checking if you know if a, if a current loop of the music has finished playing we don't really have good tools for that mm, don't like this Good. Um, so let us. So this is working. Let's let's make um, uh, real sound effects for when we die and, and win and so forth. So um, make a gameplay. 
and we're gonna go check end. Right. So when we win, we're gonna go music music twenty three, and then here when we lose, we're gonna go music twenty one. Mm. I wonder if we can save some tokens here. So this is the moment where we're gonna to try to save some tokens. Six six seven six seven five five. I'm gonna call this function show end or show gover. And that will include this, the fade out. Mm, we're gonna delete all of the windows. Mm, and that's gonna be it. And then here show gover. and this. Did we save tokens? We did. I'm kind of shocked. Uh, we can even save some additional tokens when we put everything in one line. And perfect. Um, yeah, then now we kind of have to win and lose, I guess, right? That's 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 the idea. That's, that's why we did it in the first place. Uh, here, maybe I will again because I'm all down with saving tokens now that we are so close to the end I will try to put everything into one line like so let's try that I can die right <laughs> let's try to get killed by a mob So this is done. Um, let us think about what. Oh yeah, I want to maybe make the music, the sound effect that um, when you advance the stairs. I really like the sound effect. I really want to implement it. So let's see. Um, so is walkable? Uh, nope. Trick bump. That's here. Trick step. Mhm. Mm so here we can do SFX. Um, that's gonna be fifty-five. I'm gonna check off the the important stuff. This is good stuff. Um, then maybe something I noticed that <clears throat> I kind of don't like how all the sound effects for for hitting people are are in this here. So so we might put the sound effects for. Um, for hitting stuff, we might put put them actually in the hit mob function. I think that might be better. Um, although, nah, you know what? Nah, it's fine. Uh, but I do want to have. <clears throat> Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, when we get blessed or stunned. And you know, this is the moment where we might add a different sound effect for getting uh, cursed and different sound effect for uh, getting blessed and different sound effect for being stunned. But but this was actually a good placeholder. I kind of didn't create multiple sound effects because I, we were in the process of negotiating which sound effect slots are free or not. So I actually just ended up using just one sound effect for everything and it worked fine. That wasn't that wasn't a bad, a bad solution for, for all of this stuff. So that's fine. Uh, and healing as well, for healing as well. Uh, oops. So now you get, um, you can heal yourself that way. That's good. 
Um, what else? Well, one important thing is the menu stuff. So let's me try to do the menu stuff. Um, update menu. All right. So moving the cursor, for example. So SFX uh, menu tick. So it's 56 for moving the cursor. Um, and then for confirm and then cancel is something that we have to deal with somehow. Let me think about this. So this is confirm. Well, basically we can always, whenever we confirm, we can always do the SFX um, 54. And whenever, whenever we cancel, it doesn't really matter how we cancel. We can do SFX um, 53. And also the 54 is something we can do when you actually pull up the menu. Um, so do but, there we go, here. So now, oh wait, this didn't, this, that, that, that seems like it's, it's, it's mixed around. Uh, so this is gonna be 53 and this is gonna be 54. Yeah, this would be bad if we confirm and then there's nothing happening. So that, that might be might, might be worthwhile thinking about. Ah, it's fine. Um, something maybe I would also do an update function when we are dead. Update go over. Here I also want to do a 54. That's confirmed. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be like a sound effect when we die. So it kind of like we, we confirm after afterwards. Um, it might be also worthwhile doing something similar when we confirm after a message. So, so this. And if it disappears, then we want to also make it maybe show it. So maybe something like, um, where did we do this, by the way? Move menu, update P turn. Nope. No, it should be update game, right? If talk went, there we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you close it, it's going to be 54. Let's go with like this, 53. This time it's going to be the uh, other way around because you kind of basically, um, you basically what you do is you remove a window. So I, for a room, like making a window disappear, I want to have the uh, something goes away sound effect. Um, but now if I bump against it here, um, I want to show the sound effect and it's going to be this one. <coughs> Here, by the way, we can do a, uh, um, we can save some, some tokens, I think. I think it saves tokens, let's see. Six, seven, eight, zero. Uh, by doing um, explode. And <clears throat> Removing all of the quotation marks. I think that that, that like that would be good. Uh, that's five tokens. That's good. So it, that kind of makes sense because you can't like trigger it and then you confirm it. Okay, now throwing um, gameplay. So let's go to where throw is. Throw, there we go. Uh -huh. And here we're gonna do SFX uh, 52. I'm a bit worried that SFX 52 and 58, when you hit something, are being played at the same time. Um, but in reality, that kind of 
it seems to work fine. So you see now this kind of like, it looks more like throwing even if you don't actually see like a projectile throwing uh, going through space. Perfect. Uh, that kind of like um, clears up most of the stuff that we dealt with. Let's see, menu ticking, uh, cancel throw special. I think we got it. How oh, interesting the the slime was surprised by us because we were in like um, in in the area that were uh, with the thorn, so the he couldn't actually see us. That's really funny. Okay, this leaves us at six thousand seven hundred seventy. That's actually amazing because when last time around I programmed this, I was pretty much at this point. I don't think I was at a, at a better better situation. No, I think that I think like feature wise we were almost almost identical and I was at 8144. So we kind of like saved over a thousand tokens with kind of some optimization stuff. So I'm really proud of us actually. This is this is pretty amazing. I don't really think that I have a lot more. That's really good. So with these over a thousand tokens, we can like really think about how are we going to invest those tokens. Um there's maybe one thing that I, I would maybe talk about, which I think might be worthwhile. I already did some tests about this and that, that might be uh, improving the game. But also like think about, um, and, you know, and the future consideration would be also how to add more variation to the enemies, maybe add enemies that we already had like these these question marks things that I'm not going to show in a tutorial how to do this, but you that's, that would be the homework for you basically. Like maybe enemies that spawn other enemies. Uh, I had like this Shoggoth enemy, so maybe that uh, enemy wouldn't attack you, but just sit around and like throw slimes at you. Enemies that are faster, so not just enemies that go slower, but actually go faster. Uh, and then maybe the ghost idea was initially the, uh, an enemy that was something that maybe was invisible and was only visible when you were close to it, or that was m more difficult to spot. Um, also, the final enemy, the Drake, is something I'm concerned with. It would be nice to give him like something like very special as a final boss, so to speak. Maybe he would throw bombs at you or or f spit fire or something. But again, that's something that you, you have thousand tokens, and that's something that we have to kind of consider like how are we going to invest this. But uh, I think before I leave you off, um, I would maybe uh, think about. Um, yeah, let's just let us. I have like three things I want to be doing. So let's see how how we can pull this off. First of all, in the generation function, I want to change a little bit how we generate floors. Um, so when we generate rooms, I want the first room to be bigger, and the other room is gonna get smaller. So um, let's start with a room that is ten ten, and then if we place a room. And then let's go, let's add it first. Something, or we don't actually need it. We, we can figure, figure it out. Um, place room, right. So we're gonna go, if uh, hashtag rooms, is it rooms? Yeah, with hashtag rooms uh, equals one, then, and we're gonna divide it by two basic. So it's gonna be MHW divided by two. So generally the rooms will be smaller because I reduced them to five, five. They were initially at six, six. Um, so they would generally be smaller, but the first room will be a lot bigger. So there's like now there's gonna be like this big room around which everything is centered and all the other ones get, uh... so let's see. Oh, <laughs> I should remove this. I don't need, I don't need that feature anymore. Updates, uh, let's see, that's where is it? Yeah, this one. 
We don't need this. And technically we don't need this anymore either, so... So we don't really see it technically, right? Because sometimes even the bigger room will be still like a like a smaller room that <laughs> won't be that, that much bigger. Let's see if I can survive this. Come on, man. Sweet meatloaf. Ah. Oh. Let's maybe let's me let, let me bring this back where we can generate the next floor. Yeah, so see, this is a really big room on the right side here, and now that room is basically... I, I'm pretty sure that was the first room that we generated in this one. Yeah, that's good. We generally... I thought like the rooms were slightly too big, so like by um, bringing them down a little bit, but still allowing for a big room to appear um, through this first room that you play as, I think we'd get a bit more variation, a bit more contrast between the sizes of the different rooms. And I think generally like, a very big room is not that fun gameplay-wise. Um, okay, so this is it. Um, but now comes maybe the more complicated thing. So here's the thing. We already talked about how we have this in, in the generator here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we already fixed this. Good. Um, in the generator here, entry not in an alcove. So it would be nice, or something I thought about is how are we... Uh, oops. Um, is there maybe some other ways of placing the, um, the first room? And so here's something I came up with. I, here's a pattern that I came up with. I call this the freestanding pattern. So basically it's a pattern where um, you have a tile and it's surrounded by uh, free tiles but in a very special pattern and namely that all of the three tiles around this tile are accessible uh, from each other so you can walk around any any given feature um, so if you think about this if you let's say you have a chest we want to place a chest and it, um, so we're going to look for a pattern where uh, you don't like the chest is not stopping you from go, uh, from anything. So it's kind of like if you're standing here, you can go all the way around the chest, and the chest chest is not stopping you. Similarly, here when we when you're here, you can go all around the chest, and you don't have to interact with the chest. And here, like even if you're standing here at the X here, you can go all the way around here, and and the chest is not blocking you. Um, you could con continue this pattern, but you know eventually we'll get into the situation where yes, that you can circumvent the chest simply because the chest is anyway in like in some kind of corner in some kind of alcove. But these are kind of like um, in the open kind of positions patterns that are nonetheless um, not. Um, not really um, blocking anything and I'm not like in between two structures. So something I would maybe do now is to implement this and to make it so that our starting position, not so much our ending position, but our st starting position can be um, uh, also in one of those locations, especially when uh, outside of the room. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch over back to the original. So what I want to do now is I want to copy all of these and I want to paste them in, in our uh, as a new type of signature that we can look for. Be right back. <laughs> All right, so this is basically it. So we have like those two signatures here, and so we're gonna create a new function. This might be, by the way, this might be a situation where we might be might be worthwhile to create a function that generally checks checks for a signature. So um, let me see uh, how we can carve. Was the next one last one right? Um, where is it? Can carve. Yeah, here we're going through all of the signatures and whenever we find a signature, we return something. Um, let me... There's, I think, two of those situations here in the, with the doors, right? So let's let's do something like function... Um, 
sig um, let's go with sig array and then it's gonna be sig array it's gonna be it's not gonna be the most uh, creative and then um, array and mask array mar so we're going through this array we're comparing the signature against this array and against this mask. And if we found one, then we're going to return i. And otherwise, we return uh, 0. Um, so we can now use the sig array function to, um, to kind of sim simplify a lot of the comparison we did upstairs. And I'm going to put this function next to the get sig function because it's kind of like another part of this toolbox of us comparing signatures. So for example, when we do the, uh, where is it, carve cuts, can carve, where is it can carve, there it can carve. Yeah, so when we're here doing the comparison, we can do a sig array. Uh, if sig array sig curve sig curve mask, uh, we basically re return sig array equals not equals zero. If it's not zero, then it's walk. Then it's it's all of this is true. Um, yeah. So first of all, let's let's make sure that this actually works. We can even actually r get rid of this variable and just plug this get sig directly into the sig array thing. Let's try that. Still works, which is great. Um, we can use the same function for the door. Is door I think is something that we had here. Yeah. No, but it was just like two signatures. Where else have we used an array of signatures? This wall sig. Yeah, we did a wall signature. I, I knew it. Where did we fill ends? Next to room. Oh, I think. Wait. Yeah, wall sig. Let's, how, where did you do this? Aha. Ah, where we prettified the, the walls. Yeah. Uh, how do we do this? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So we can use the same function here where we prettify the walls. We're gonna, basically going to. Oops. Ah. Uh, sig. Wall sig. And wall misc. And we're gonna go tile equals um, fifteen plus. And we don't need don't need any of those anymore. So let's see if this works. It kind of works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, what, did, what did we do wrong? Oh, I think the, the break is the problem. Is that a, the reason? No, it's not. For sometimes it, it shows this. Oh, because sometimes it's minus one. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's fine. So let's let's do something like because sometimes it doesn't find a, a tile, and in this case we want to just keep the tile around, right? It's kind of funny that it sometimes doesn't find a tile. Why? For what kind of situations? Oops! I made I messed everything up. I made everything worse. Um, Fifteen plus. Sometimes it doesn't find a tile. Here in this corner. I guess if it's surrounded, because this is being surrounded is not something that we. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah.
Okay, so we're going to do something like um, local ntle equals um, sig array, and then if ntle equals minus one, then else and tle equals 15 plus n tle and otherwise tle equals um, three. And we can get paste this in here so we don't ever get the signature. That should be should do the trick. Um, Oh, there's still some issues up the, over there. Huh. Oh, it's zero. Okay, that works. Oops, I just realized that the setup was a bit wrong here. So back to the old setup. I hopefully you've seen everything I coded here. I think I think we should be fine. So just to um, reiterate, we're using our now, now like a function that generally compares the signature with a whole array of, of signatures and then it uh, returns, if it finds an entry in that um, com array that's supposed to compare to, it will return that one uh, index uh, that, that fits and that matches the signature. And if it doesn't find a sig uh, signature, it will return zero. And we kind of like use this to kind of like simplify this. And now we can use it to create this new function. We're gonna call this Function free standing. We can call this like this. And that will, I mean, we probably don't need it as a function, but, but just in case, we just, um, we're gonna plop it in here. Uh, nope, that's not right, right. Um, mm -mm -mm. How do we call it? Um, something like sig error, right? Sig array, sig. Sig, uh, sig array. Mm -hmm. um, sig array gets sig x y, uh, and then this new signature. And by the way, we can save a bunch of tokens if we convert it later on to uh, an explode. But you know that's something that comes out later. Okay, so we compare it with this new mask, and so this would be a really great moment. I just want to see how this looks, right? I just want to see. Um, so. We're gonna go over to the uh, not pretty walls. Where is it? Place nope, not place flex. Start end. This is the one. So here uh, I want to just like um, I'm gonna use this free sending function to mark certain tiles with a certain thing. I'm gonna use a debug map, a new debug map. I'm gonna use a new. Um, Array. We're gonna this just for debugging purposes. We're gonna remove this later later on. Blank map. Uh, wait, that's wrong. Zero. There we go. And then um, we don't do something like um, we looping through this anyway. We're gonna kind of like use this debug. Um, if freestanding x y equals uh, is greater than zero, then <clears throat> debug map. I just want to like set this debug map at this position to one and then a draw function I just want to draw all of the elements that are where the debug map is to set to something. So we're going to loop through all of this stuff and if debug map is greater than zero then we are going to um there I, I actually already did some little bit of changes here i did like a little cut away this one tile here the tile number 63 i made it into like this kind of outline here that kind of like gives us an idea of what which maps where which tiles are are um, which tiles are covered by the signature so it's going to be x y times 8 y times 8 Let's see. Um, all right, the debug map doesn't always exist. So if debug map um, is not equals nil, 
And just in case, we're gonna mark this as this is really just debugging purposes to you. Um, well, then. Um, so there's a problem with the mar here. So apparently some kind of comparison is bad. Um, hmm. Let's look at my, our new function here, get sick, free, sick, free mask. Oh, MSK, not mask. Okay, so you see now the tiles that are um, surrounded by with this um, red border are kind of like a count as freestanding. So they count as, f as freestanding and you can see like the, um, a lot of these are really good candidates for a starting position because they're not necessarily like in an alcove somewhere, like tucked away in an alcove somewhere, but actually more in an open space. Uh, there's a bit of an issue here that you can see that there's some red borders next to a... Um, a door so we want we might want to get rid of those first so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually um, there's gonna be like different types of, of checking for the of the of whether something is a good starting position depending what is that star score yeah I already made I already created this function a little bit I had a problem I had a mishap with the with the layout so I had to like rewind our coding a little bit don't worry about that this is like basically a new function that I started writing here that will kind of like tell us if this is a good starting position or not. Uh, I call it star score because we might actually not just like return true or false later on, but maybe actually even give it like a number value, whether it's a good starting position or not. I'm, I'm, I know I'm making things too complicated. Right now we're just gonna remove, uh, we're just gonna go star score x, y. We're just gonna give it a, a true or false rating. So if it's true, it's a good starting position. Um, and then this is going to be the freestanding is going to be one one part of it, but not not the only one. So we're going to go, go. So first of all, it's important to find out if we are in a door or uh, if you are in a room or not. So room map x y uh, equals zero. Then then that means we are not in the room. Else and. So if we are in a room, then we're just gonna return freestanding equals is greater than zero. Um, yeah, if you're a room, we just wanna be somewhere in within the room. If we're not in the room, we just wanna make sure that we are uh, not close to a room because the freestanding would tend to kind of like erode the entrances to rooms because that's a really good spot. That's a good sp a spot is often, you know, um, uh, surrounded by walkable tiles. Um, so we already had the function for this. Uh, next to room or something it's called, right? Next to room, there we go, and that's the function. We're gonna grab that one. And so if next to room x, y, then return, return false. Right. Really easy. And then otherwise we re return, <clears throat> or something we can do. If freestanding is greater than zero, then return true. And otherwise um, return um, can carve. We, we default back to can carve if um, our freestanding function, our new freestanding function didn't re return a good result. Because, you know, if it's, if we were someone in alcove and it's not really like open space, but it's still kind of like it would work, then you can still return a kind carve. It's gotta be fine. Okay, so let's see how this works as candidates for our starting location. Oh, huh, okay. It's odd that we get It's odd that we get getting these guys on the edges. I'm not really sure why this is happening. Maybe the can car fang function is, is responsible for this. Okay, so one way of maybe checking if this is the case, we can just like, um, where is it? Where's my, oh man, where's my function? It's getting really hard sometimes to find. So I'm just gonna return false if, if I'm just gonna ignore the can carve. 
Yeah, and now we're not getting these kind of like candidates in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so this looks pretty good generally. So I now want to harness this function to actually give us the starting location. So let's see if what, hap what would happen if we uh, harness this function. And again, we are thinking about the score, right? So, um, so let's do something like this. Um, if we're returning minus one, that means that there, this, is a, this is a bad um, result. So let's go return minus one. Um, here we kind of go return if can carve x y then and return zero zero is kind of like it's fine no actually um, the can carve we want to be able to like is this fine if it's like even we want to, we will be able to, we will are willing to walk five steps until um, to a, like a better starting position. Um, uh, that is going to be better than than can carve, like we, because the pre-standing position is something that we we would like to uh, prefer, and it's going to be return zero, something like this, and then here freestanding. Uh, I'm using these return zero, but eventually we might want to plug in the freestanding um, directly into the return value of this. Okay, so this is like a very complicated situation here. At the end, I want to maybe also return minus one. Okay, good. So if we found uh, something that is okay, that we might consider, we're gonna de delete all of this. And then local score equals start score. Right. <clears throat> then we don't don't care about the debug map anymore. Then we're gonna go tmp equals tmp minus star um, uh, score, and then if um, TMP then. Okay, just so reiterate. So if we found something where that is on our distance map, we calculate the, the star score of that kind of like uh, of that spot. And we're gonna take the distance map and we subtract the score result from it. So uh, the better the score, the, the, the closer will this location appear to our to our to what we're looking for. And then we go doing the check if we are below the, the low value here because we're looking for the lowest possible value. That's why sub we subtract the score because that gets the value even lower than it would be otherwise. And then we save everything. Good. So let's see if this works. Now we are somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure if this is this what we wanted. Okay, this is a good starting location. This is not a good starting location. This is a good starting location because this is like in a room. So, so I'm not feeling as... This is okay starting location. This is okay. That's still not, not ideal to be perfectly honest. Inside, we can, now we can start inside the rooms. So that's that's pretty nice. I don't like this one. Let me see what's happening. Ah, so we're getting better results from can carve than for freestanding. It should be other way around. We should get better results for freestanding than for can carve. Ah, see, so now it kind of like starts us in like in this kind of like to create like a tiny little room for us to start in, which I think is better if we are getting surrounded by enemies. I think these are better starting locations. It will pick out this, these kind of like um, edge spots here. Might be even worthwhile to uh, to pick starting spots that are um, that are more um, more like centered in the room, and we can actually do that. So we're gonna go if resetting is greater. Let's go like local SCR equals freestanding. 
and if ECR is greater than zero, then if SCR is greater than, um, so the four, first four entries of SCR are kind of like very open entries. So let's actually, let's go the first eight entries, then return three, else return zero. I know this is like a very convoluted thing and we can optimize it later on, but I just wanna, okay, but it didn't start us there yet. I wanted to have it to start us. It's not working. Let's see what's what's the matter here. Ah, it should be other way around. It should be smaller equals eight. So the first eight ed entries of our, remind you to remind you again real quick. So the first eight entries are is the left column here, and these are basically pretty open locations. The last four entries are kind of like corner locations. So we want to kind of like deprioritize them if we're talking about certain locations in a uh, in a um, or in a room. Okay, so now it creates like this little alcove for us. That's like this little room entrance. This is also good. I only have a room starting location. This is also really great. That's fine. Ooh, this is really nice, this starting location, but still no rooms. Give me a room, baby. Okay, now we are in the room, but still on, a, on the edge. Well, that makes sense. The edges are kind of like the, um, are still covered by the first eight entries. That's fine, that's fine. I think like this is a way better starting location than, you know, uh, in, in the corner where it's just like two, two ways of getting out there. Uh, so now that uh, we can even start in the corner, in a, in a, in a room, uh, we might even add a little bit of a thing where, um, we're gonna check, um, we're gonna mark that room that we start in. If we're starting in a room, we're gonna mark that room that we start in as a room where no monsters should spawn. So we never get you know, started in something that is surrounded by monsters. But you know what? This episode has been very, very long. Something I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play through uh, our game for a lot of times and I will be back in the next episode where we do some kind of final finish ups where we're gonna take a look at kind of like my playtesting session results. If there's something we can parse about this. I think there a bit of a problem with the way we generate rooms here. I'm gonna make sure that the starting locations are always meaningful uh, and maybe there's some kind of gameplay tweaks I want to check with, um, with the monster values and so forth and then we can uh, do kind of like a wrap up maybe talk about what other features we could um, implement with the final thousand tokens. Um, yeah, but this is basically like we're wrapping up this 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 tutorial here. So if you have any other comments, any uh, requests for any features, let me know, and I will try to maybe um, talk about them in the last uh, episode or two. Um, join our the code for this episode is going to be down at doobly doo. Join our um, Discord. And um, yeah, and there's also to get out, get the t-shirts here, uh, which you can get in our store uh, downstairs, and that will also support the channel. Um, I will remove the debugging stuff before I save this, and so yeah, we're gonna see each other on the next episode. Bye bye, guys.